Uh, I thought I'd put together a video showing how to automate the movement of control surfaces for an aircraft. So here we have my little model flying along a path, and as it flies along the path, uh, the ailerons, rudder, and um, elevators all react based on what the plane's doing. So if it's diving, you know, these are going to go up. If it's turning to the right or left, you can see how the ailerons kind of snap up and down and the rudder turns. Uh, and this is all done with a really simple rig and a path. So let me show you how I did that. So here I've got my basic model here, and I'm going to start by creating a bone in the middle of our arbiter with a single bone in it. Let's scale that up. Can put it name, and we'll put it in front. And I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so it's pointing toward the nose. I'm going to apply rotation and scale. And going into edit mode, I'm going to name my bone. I'm going to call it root, so F2, root. And now I want to add some other bones for the other control surfaces. So Shift A, it's going to give me a bone. I'm going to move this over here, scale it up. And this will control our right aileron. And just kind of put it in the middle there. Middle of the wing is probably good enough. And let's go to the top. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'll put it over here, and this one I'm going to rotate Oops. so it's pointing the other direction. And I want them to point in opposite directions because when I want uh, this aileron to go up, I want this one to go down. Uh, so they're just going to be going opposite directions. And let's take this one, I'm going to duplicate it, put it back here, and this will be our elevators. Just move this up so it's roughly in the middle. I'm not spending a lot of time making this a perfect rig. So that'll be our elevator bone. And I'm going to create one more. I'm going to duplicate this bone. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, negative, And I'm going to scale it down a bit. I'm just going to put it in here between the fuselage and the rudder. So uh, if we want to, we can quickly name these. Go to here, hit F2, rudder. All right, so we got everything named. Um, right now, if we get out of edit mode and I move my bones, they're all connected, but the plane is not connected to it. So first thing to do is take the fuselage, shift select the root bone, go into pose mode and select the root bone, control P, and I want to choose bone. And that's going to um, uh, parent my entire airplane to that bone. So now if I move the bone the airplane goes with it. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to parent these control surfaces to their associated bones. So select the aileron, shift select the uh, armature, go into pose mode, select the aileron left bone, control P, and choose bone. And now if I go into pose mode and I move this guy, it moves that. And if I move the, um, the entire rig, you can see how that aileron comes with it. So let me quickly do that with the other guys. All right, so now if I move the armature itself, the whole airplane goes with it, which is what we want. Now we want to limit the rotation of these a bit, because right now I can move this any way I want. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to escape, get out of that. And if we turn on our axes over here on the right, you can see that we only want the aileron to move on the Y axis. So I can change this to Euler and just lock these. And now if I do this, it only moves that way. I can do the same thing for this guy, Euler. X, Z. This one's also along the Y axis. And then the rudder is also going to be along the Y axis. So now if I move the rudder, it moves back and forth. If I move the elevators, they go up and down. And then our ailerons are locked to just move the way they're supposed to move. Now we have one more bone to add. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to say Go into edit mode, add a bone. I'm going to scale it up. So I want to scale it up from the origin. Rotate it 90, negative. And I'm going to move it right along so that it's out in front of the plane, like that. All right, and we're going to call this one pointer. All right, and this bone is going to really control um, where it, it this, this this bone's going to point in the direction the plane's going to fly and, and then indirectly it's going to control how the control surfaces move all right so now we need to create some drivers so that when this pointer moves in different directions it controls these uh 
other objects. So let's start with, let's say the aileron. And I'm gonna bring this down and let's open up our driver window here. All right, and we know that the aileron is only going to, we need to be in say pose mode here. We know that the aileron is only gonna move on the Y axis. So I'm gonna right click on that Y axis, add a driver, select my Y, go over to the driver tab over here, drag this over here. And let's add a driver so that when this pointer points left or right, it moves this aileron up and down. So we want to choose our armature. It's going to choose the armature. And then from within the list of bones in that armature, I'm going to choose pointer. Uh, this is one of the reasons why you want to name your bones. Otherwise, these would just be bone one, bone two. So easy enough to pick that. And we know that we want the, as this bone moves left and right, it rotates left and right, so along its x-axis. So I want to look at its x rotation, and I want it to be its local space, not world space. So as this boom, as this bone moves kind of left and right, we want it to affect the y rotation of this. And how much it, it rotates is really based on this variable up here. So right now it's just going to be a one for one. If this thing moves 10 degrees, this is going to move 10 degrees. So you could put in a formula here if your ailerons only go a certain number of degrees and you want to max out, then you could certainly do that here, right in this formula here. Um, but for right now, if I move this along the x, its x-axis, oops, I'm still in origin there, let's change it to median. So if I move this, you can see now that that aileron moves as this pointer deflects left and right. So let's go back to here. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna to copy the driver, select this aileron, paste the driver, and now if I move this, you can see that if I move it back and forth, the ailerons move in different directions. And they move in opposite directions because I got the bones pointing opposite directions. If your bones are pointing in the same direction, let's say they're both pointing to the left, you would just need to make this, you know, like times negative one in order to, you know, invert the direction, but we're okay the way it is. So we want to do something similar with the elevator. So we want to paste the driver again, but we don't want the elevator to Actually, it's already set because the bones are side to side, but we want the elevator to point, sorry, we want the elevator to go up and down when this bone goes up and down. So if I hit RZZ, you can see that motion doesn't mean anything to the elevator. It's only if I hit RXX and that moves the elevator. So we don't want that. So I need to change the driver for this guy so that it's not the X axis of this bone, but the Z rotation. So go there, select Z rotation. And now if I do RZZ, you can see that as this points up, the elevator is going to point up, right? So that, as if the plane is climbing up. So you can imagine that this is going to point to a target or it's, it's going to anticipate the direction that the plane is going to fly. So if I do RZZ, you know, the plane's going to start climbing. You can see how that moves the elevator up. If the plane starts to dive, it's going to move the elevators down. So let's do the last one here. Let's do the rudder. I'm going to paste the driver here. And this, of course, is only going to work on the left to right movement of the, right? So as the plane banks left and right, we want the rudder to change. So if I hit RXX, so the pointer's going to the right. You can see how the rudder's pointing in the wrong direction here. The rudder's pointing as if it's making a left turn, right? So if I do RXX, that's backwards. That's okay. I can just take this, go to the driver, and then just like I said before, times negative one. And then I'll invert it. And now if I point my direction thing to the right, the rudder points in the right direction. You know, the aileron on the right lifts up, so the plane's gonna bank to the right, right? And the same thing over here, see the elevator on the, the aileron on the left is, is lifting up, so the plane's gonna be banking left, rudder left. And then I do RZZ, it's just the elevators that, that move. All right, so far so good. Next thing I wanna do, is I want to add an empty that's going to be the target for this plane to fly to. This is going to be um, an empty that sits out here on the path, and then as that empty moves around, it'll kind of predict where the plane is going to fly. So let me show you what that means. So I'm going to deselect everything, and I'm going to create an empty, stick it in here, and I'm just going to make it bigger so we can see it. And for the time being, I'm going to move it out here. Uh, one thing to note is right now, everything I'm doing, this this rig, this airplane, everything has its origin here um, at the 000, zero, zero origin. That's going to be important later when we put this thing on a path. Uh, when you put an object on a path, it works often best if your object is um, 
located at zero, zero, zero. Um, but for right now, I'm gonna put this, this empty out front here just so we can see how this parenting works. So for this, we're gonna need a constraint. So I go into pose mode and I want to add a bone constraint, right? Uh, not, not an object constraint, but a bone constraint. And we want to use say a damped track constraint and we want to point to this empty. And then now if I go back into object mode, if I move this empty around, you can see that the pointer points to it and the control surfaces all move in conjunction with that. So let's, now let's add a curve. All right, so we want this plane to fly along a curve. So I'm going to deselect everything. Oops. I'm going to add a curve, it's the Bezier curve, scale it up, scale it up, scale it up. And let's make it kind of interesting. We'll add some extra segments to it. All right, so there's our curve. Push this one down a little bit. All right, crazy curve. All right, so the next thing to do is to add a curve modifier to our bones and have it fly along this path. So just go over to the object constraint tab right here, and we want to add a follow path constraint, and we're going to select our curve. And you can see how that's going to snap our armature to the path. You know what, this path is kind of uh, it's got some hard shapes on it, so let's smooth it out. I'm just going to move the resolution up. So let's go back to our bones and go back to our constraint. And you can see the plane's pointing in the wrong direction, so let's try negative y, follow curve, try something else. Negative x, maybe? That might work. It might be, might be looking weird because I got such a tight curve right at the beginning. All right, that's probably pretty good. Um, and then we want, so we got follow curve on, we've got that, and now we need to animate the path. And I've got in my timeline, um, standard 250 frames. If I hit animate path, it's gonna animate it actually for 100 frames, which is the default. You can see under here under path animation, frames is 100. I'm just gonna change that to 250. And now if I hit the play button, Um, my airplane should fly along the path. All right, so it flies along the path, it follows it. Awesome, but the um, control surfaces don't actually uh, have any relationship to the attitude of the airplane. So let's go back to the beginning here. And now we need to take that empty, this guy, and I'm gonna put it back at the origin. So I'm gonna hit Alt-G, just gonna snap it back to the origin, and I'm gonna add a follow path constraint to this guy as well. And I'm gonna choose the same path. And you can see that's going to stick our empty right at the beginning of the path. But um, we really want the empty to be out in front of the plane. So we can just change that with the offset. So I'm gonna drag this along here. And you can see as the um, empty moved forward, you know, past the airplane, that, that pointer here started to point to it properly. And depending on how fast and your animation, the further out you move this, this empty um, kind of indicates uh, you know, how soon the uh, control surface is going to react to the turn. Uh, but now if we play the animation, I'm trying to get a little lineup here, it's a little easier to see. Um, you can see the plane's kind of doing a bank here. And then as it levels out, the ailerons and the rudder and everything level out. In fact, what uh, may be a better thing to do, let me um, go back to the beginning. I'm gonna turn this off for a moment. And I'm going to create a camera, and then we can have the camera just follow the airplane. Look through the airplane. And then I'll just parent the, uh, the camera to the airplane, and then as it flies around, you'll be able to see exactly how the control surfaces work. So let's take our, um, our uh, camera, select our bones, control P, and we're just gonna parent that to the, uh, so now that if we move the armature, the uh, camera's gonna stick with it. If we look through the camera, we'll fly with it. 
So let's take our armature and we're gonna stick it back on the curve. So we're back on the curve. Let's look through our camera. We can see our airplane. And let me zoom in a little bit more, make it all easier to see. And let's see what happens when I hit play. So the plane's flying along, it's diving, it's climbing. Let me um, maybe hide the uh, armature, make it a little easier to see what's going on. So there you go, it dives, it climbs. And obviously the, the amount of rotation you, you do in here would be defined by your driver. So if it's too much or too little, you would just multiply by some value to increase or decrease it. Um, but at least this way, if you have your airplane flying along a path, uh, you don't have to animate to each control surface as the airplane curves and dives and stuff. Uh, that'll all get taken care of uh, by the armature. And this would apply to missiles and rockets and you know, any other control surface you want to have uh, react to your path. All right, I hope that was helpful. Good luck with your projects.